The Obama administration released four Bush-era memos today, each of which lays out in mind-bending, rote detail the Bush administration's legal justifications for torturing people in CIA custody. One of the memos released today, written by a man named Jay Bybee, who was then an assistant attorney general and who now remarkably is a federal judge. Uh, his memo authorized these 10 specific techniques to be used against one prisoner. Quote, attention grasp, walling, facial hold, facial slap, cramped confinement, wall standing, stress positions, sleep deprivation, insects placed in confinement box, and the waterboard. Then Judge Bybee explains in his memo how it is that things like sleep deprivation or insects placed in a confinement box, let alone walling, to his brilliant legal mind, do not constitute torture. On waterboarding specifically, he says, quote, we find that the use of the waterboard constitutes a threat of imminent death, which would seem to constitute torture, except that... Quote, although the waterboard constitutes a threat of imminent death, prolonged mental harm must nonetheless result to violate the anti-torture statute. In the absence of prolonged mental harm, no severe mental pain or suffering would have been inflicted, and the use of these procedures would not constitute torture. You got that? Since who's to say if being tied down and forcibly drowned actually causes you any trouble in the long run? <laughs> Go for it. Mr. Bybee goes on to say, quote, the waterboard could not be said to inflict severe suffering. Really? By which species standards? Not only did they say that waterboarding someone was not inflicting severe suffering on them, they also said even if pain and suffering did result from, say, slamming a person into a wall or locking them inside a dark confined box stuffed with insects, that resulting pain and suffering would be unintentional pain and suffering. And you know how you can tell it's unintentional? Quote, the constant presence of personnel with medical training indicates that it is not your intent to cause severe physical pain. So as long as the doctors in the room carry on. Wow. Civil libertarians today cheered the Obama administration's decision to make these memos public, particularly in light of the CIA's well-broadcast efforts to keep them secret. In keeping with past statements, the president also said that CIA officers who carried out officially authorized torture will not be prosecuted. He said, quote, in releasing these memos, it is our intention to assure those who carrying out, who carried out their duties excuse me, who in carrying out their duties, relying on good faith upon the legal advice from the Department of Justice, that they will not be subject to prosecution. Attorney General Eric Holder reiterated, telling the CIA, quote, it would be unfair to prosecute dedicated men and women working to protect America for conduct that was sanctioned in advance by the Justice Department. Well, how about prosecuting the people who did the sanctioning then? Joining us now is Jonathan Turley, professor of constitutional law at George Washington University Law School. Professor Turley, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, Rachel. So in this White House statement today, President Obama said, this is a time for reflection, not retribution. Nothing will be gained by spending our time and energy laying blame for the past. I have to ask you if you think he's promising to not prosecute officials who sanctioned torture, or is he just saying that he won't prosecute CIA officers who carried out the orders? It's very hard to say because the officials, of course, wrote these memos and approved them, and the memos went to the people who conducted torture. But what is really disturbing is that President Obama is obviously referring to criminal investigation and prosecution, that somehow he's equating the enforcement of federal laws that he took an oath to enforce, to uphold the Constitution and our laws. And he's equating that with an act of retribution and some sort of hissy fit or blame game. You know, it's not retribution to enforce criminal laws. What it is is obstruction to prevent that enforcement, and that is exactly what he's done thus far. He is trying to lay the groundwork to look principled when he's doing an utterly unprincipled thing. There's very few things worse for a president to do than to protect accused war criminals, and that's what we're talking about here. President Obama himself has said that waterboarding is torture, and torture violates at least four treaties and is considered a war crime. 
So the refusal to let it be investigated is to try to obstruct a war crime investigation that puts it in the same category as Serbia and other countries that have refused to allow investigations to occur. Can a president actually decide who gets prosecuted for breaking a, breaking a law and who doesn't? Well, he's not supposed to. You know, what's amazing is that we've gotten used to senators and, and our president and uh, the attorney general talking about whether it's a convenient time, whether this is a good time for us to investigate, whether we've got ed other things to do. There aren't any convenient or inconvenient times to investigate war crimes. You don't have a choice. You don't wait for the perfect moment. You have an obligation to do it. And what I think the president is desperately trying to do is to sell this idea that somehow it's a principled thing not to investigate war crimes because it's going to really be painful. And quite frankly, I think the motive is obvious. He knows that it will be politically unpopular because an investigation will go directly to the doorstep of President Bush, and he knows it. And there's not going to be a lot of defenses that could be raised for ordering a torture program. The ACLU today, in response to these memos, and the reason, it should be noted, the reason that we got them is because of their dogged legal work, their Freedom of Information Act request to get these, to get these memos out there. And today, in response to their release, they're calling for a special prosecutor to move forward on enforcing the law here. I get confused about special prosecutor versus the other types of things that aren't just regular prosecutors. Is a special prosecutor <laughs> the right way forward? And the special investigator, special counsel, special prosecutor gets a little woolly. <laughs> well, the, it is the right way to go. That is, the president needs to appoint someone outside the Justice Department. But the important thing is, if he wants to guarantee that it's not retribution and not the blame game, all he has to do is pick an independent person, someone who is manifestly not partisan, and have them make a decision based on the law. Isn't that the easiest thing to do? Not have a politician decide whether this is a convenient time to enforce the law, but to give it to a career prosecutor and ask him to take the investigation wherever illegality may be found. That's the easiest way to guarantee there's no retribution. There's just simply the enforcement of our laws. Jonathan, one last quick question for you. In reading the Bybee memo today, um, I have to say that I am troubled by the, by the fact that the guy who reasoned out that waterboarding doesn't inflict suffering is now a sitting federal judge. Is that forever? Is there any way that that gets <laughs> undone? Uh, only if he resigns or if he's impeached. Uh, it is a very obnoxious thought to think that the author of this memo is rendering judgments on American citizens and has lifetime tenure. It is even more disturbing that the Democrats did comparatively little to block the nomination, even though they knew he was involved in this controversy. They refused to take steps they could have stepped, uh, they could have taken that would have prevented him from going on the bench. And so we have this now incredible image of the author of these unbelievable memos is sitting in judgment and, and enforcing the law against hundreds of citizens during his lifetime tenure as a judge. There is that impeachment idea, I suppose. Jonathan Turley, <laughs> constitutional law professor at George Washington University Law School. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks, Rachel.